Hey guys, Jay here from NVE Gaming, back with episode 3 of our VGC 17 Battle Spot series. So I'm going to jump back in with the same team I've been using, uh, the one I brought to the Houston Midseason Showdown. As you can see down there, let's switch back to our good old Elite Four music. And let's see if we can keep up this win streak. 2-0 so far to start out this series, and I think we uh, last episode uh, just broke into the 1600s. Yep, 1611. Let's see who we find. Finally got to show off uh, Mudsdale in the last episode. Put in a lot of work and pretty much single-handedly won us that game. Particularly with the Z close combat to take out the Porygon 2, which was very satisfying. Alright, we find Chooser with a rating of 1551. And they are rocking... Ooh, that is an interesting team. Gyarados, Coco, Chomp, and Marowak, which are all relatively normal, but then also the Primeape and the Delmize. So Primeape, I believe, gets the Defiant ability, meaning if it's uh, intimidated, it gets plus two attack, so essentially a net plus one. And Delmize is a very slow Pokemon, so good in Trick Room. Gets a lot of good attacks, like Anchor Shot and Power Whip. I haven't seen much of it, but I at least kind of have an idea what it does. So Coco, in theory, looks good here. Um, Obviously, I have to watch out for the Marowak. That's the kind of one thing that shuts down my Coco, especially since it's Specs. If I get locked into Electric Move, I'm kind of done. Um, Kartana, also not bad. Can hit a lot of things on the team pretty hard. Also has to watch out for Marowak. Arcanine's pretty good for Intimidate support, but I do have to watch out for the Primate because I'll actually give it an attack boost. Tapu Fini's looking good here, though. I think, well, it has to watch out for Coco and Delmize. Mudsdale is okay here. I think I actually want P2 to hit both the Gyarados and the Garchomp for a times 4 effective hit. I'll lead with that and my Kartana. And I want Feeny to deal with the Marowak. And I think I'm going to go ahead and bring Coco as well. And I think that covers pretty much everything I need here. I would like Arcanine for the Intimidate. I'm just a little scared of giving the Primate the Defiant boost. Maybe I shouldn't be, and I should have just brought Arcanine anyway. Because Intimidate was good against a lot of his team. But we'll see. He's rocking the Professor Oak shirt. I like it. It's definitely one of my favorite shirts in the game. Alright, so we're leading with P2, or Kartana, against his Primate Coco. Okay, so I'm glad I didn't lead Arcanine. And this is an okay lead. Um, I wonder if that's like Z Crystal Primate to deal with Porygon 2s. It might be, so I'm a little scared to stay in. I did get the attack boost as well, so let's see. If I'm thinking, like, I want to switch into Feeny to take a potential fighting move, but that's also a little sketchy to do with the Coco out on the field. I think I'm going to go for it, though. I don't think he's going to electric move my Porygon, and if he does, then I will be sad. He could also fighting move Kartana, which is also going to hurt. But I think I'm just going to go for the Leaf Blade onto Tapu Koko to put it in KO range of whatever I want next turn. This could be a bad first turn, because I really don't know what to expect from Primeape, which is the scary thing about facing kind of unusual Pokemon, and which is why they're also fun to use. We're gonna get rid of his electric terrain at least, so even if he does electric move, Feeny, I should be able to take one. He's T Bolts, hopefully Kartana. Yep, I take that pretty well with my Assault Vest. We see that he's Life Orb. So this Leaf Blade might. Eh, I don't think okay, but it'll do a lot. Yeah, it brings it down in the red. And this is Z Fighting Move, so I'm really hoping this is into Tapu Feeny. If it is, this is gonna be a pretty good first turn because Feeny should be able to take that no problem. It'll definitely KO Kartana, though, if it's into Kartana. That's got to be into Feeny, though, because that's his only way to kill Porygon. Yeah, that's what I thought. I know about the Z fighting moves. I do those, too. I'm prepared for that. All right, Feeny takes that reasonably well. Still does a pretty respectable amount, honestly, given that it's the top of Feeny. Granted, mine isn't the bulkiest in the world, but still. Okay, so that first turn went about as good as it was going to. Um, it's tempting to protect Feeny and just try and KO Coco, but he could read that and k protect his Tapu Coco and KO my Kartana with his Primeape. 
So I think a smarter thing to do is actually switch back into Porygon, because he's not going to fight him with the Tapu Fini again. That would be ridiculous. And then Leaf Blade this Primeape, because I'm expecting Coco to protect or switch out. And Primeape doesn't have great defense as far as I know. Okay, looks like Coco stayed in, so hopefully it protected. Even if it doesn't, it can't KO Cartana with Thunderbolt. Oh, wow, he's going for Focus Punch. Okay, I'm glad I attacked it then. So that's into Porygon, which will eat it. And it puts him into range of killing himself next turn, so I'm really glad that I went after this Primeape here. And that just takes it out, making sure it doesn't get the Focus Punch off and giving me the Beast Boost. Focus Punch, that's scary. That would have done a lot to... Well, I mean, it definitely would have killed Kartana. I'm guessing that was what his Z-move was based on, though. I think I'd probably go for... I'd choose, like, Close Combat. I don't actually know if Primate gets it, but I assume it does. Maybe it doesn't, in which case he was running Focus Punch instead. Alright, so this is a decent position for us. So I can definitely Ice Beam Chomp. Um, Coco will kill itself with Life Orb Recoil. And honestly, it can't one-shot either of my two Pokemon, so I kind of just want to leave it alone and let it kill itself. Um, and then I have Feeny in the back to also deal with Chomp. So I think I'm going to Ice Beam the Guard Chomp. It might protect, but even if it does, that's not the end of the world. And then with Kartana... Well, Coco's going to go before Kartana regardless and kill itself with Life Orb Recoil if it attacks, so I think I'll double this Guard Chomp slot. A decent chance Coco protects. Ooh, it's Fire Fang Chomp. That's scary. And it's Scarfed. And that's why best of ones are tough. <laughs> okay, so that's a Gleam. That's fine. He'll kill himself with Life Orb Recoil, and Porygon take 2 takes that pretty well. And as long as his Ice Beam KOs the Garchomp, we're still in pretty good shape. And it does not. But because he's Scarfed and locked into Fire Fang, I feel pretty good about this still. Let's see, he still had Delmise potentially, so Feeny is questionable. I don't remember what else he had, but I think Coco is pretty safe either way since I know the Garchomp is locked into Fire Fang. Okay, it is Delmise. Which is cool, because I kind of want to see what that thing does. He brought both of his unusual Pokemon, which is nice. Just so we can see them. Alright, get my Electric Surge up. Garchomp is the fastest thing on the field, but because it's locked into Fire Fang, unless it flinches me, it's really not a threat. And Feeny definitely deals with the Garchomp later, but it... So the Delmise is the problem here. So I kind of just want to double into it with Ice Beam and a Dazzling Gleam. And that will also get rid of Garchomp. And I think that's the thing that I'm... I think that's the play to go for. I could have recovered with Porygon here. That might have been smarter. Just to play it safe, because now it's in range of Delmai's KO if it went for it. So let's see. I think I still have enough firepower to deal with this. Ooh, it does flinch. Hopefully it's into Coco. Okay, that's fine. Coco doesn't matter anymore. So Ice Beam plus Dazzling Gleam might get the KO, but I don't know. So I think because Porygon is faster than Delmise, I'm going to play it safe and recover here and just go for the Dazzling Gleam. There's no reason to switch out. I'm locked into Gleam, so I'm just going to go for that. Single target, it'll do a pretty good amount of damage. Probably do bring it down to around half health. And then Porygon will be healthy enough to take any move Del Delmise throws at it. And I think we've got this one locked up. Wow, that's a crit. I feel kind of bad about that, but I don't think it matters anymore in this game. I think we're good at either way. So I could have just Ice Beam there and would have won, especially with that crit. Goes for the Anchor Shot, and man, that's a cool animation. That's pretty sweet. Takes out Coco, but that's fine. And here we can just double into the Delmise with an Ice Beam and Moon Blast and take it out. Yep. 
Ice Beam, and Moon Blast, and I think we're good. I don't know how especially bulky it is. I mean, but from that range, there's no way Ice Beam is not going to kill it. I think. Alright, see how much Moon Blast does. This will tell us how bulky this thing is. Alright, well, that's another crit. <laughs> Sorry about that. Chooser? Yeah, Chooser, that's a weird name. But I really don't think those crits mattered, so it's fine. Alright, this was a f relatively quick battle, so I think we're actually going to go ahead and go for another one, since we've only been going for like 10 minutes. So we get a nice victory there. I really did kind of like that guy's team. I think the most important turn um, in that whole battle was turn 1, where I kind of was weird, or was uh, a little concerned about the potential Z fighting move into the Porygon slot and switched out into Tapu Fini. That really put us in a good spot to go ahead and uh, clean up the game. All right, there we go, 16-25, very nice. But yeah, if I had left Porygon in there, that Z uh, fighting move definitely would have taken it out just right off the bat, and then we would have been in a bad position to deal with the Garchomp later on, so that was important there. We find David, the rating of, I think it was like 1540, with a pretty scary team. Uh, Togedomaru, Arcanine, Chomp, Gyarados, Nihilego, and Snorlax. So, I've seen similar teams before and they often lead with Togedomaru and Gyarados. So I'm kind of expecting that. Um, Mudsdale is pretty nice here. It beats four of his six. So I'm definitely going to bring it, but possibly in the back. Um, Trick Room is also pretty good here. Except it, I mean, apart from his Snorlax, everything else on his team is relatively speedy. So I kind of want to bring these two. Feeny is good against everything but the Nihilego and Togedomaru. So I think I'm going to bring Kartana to help deal with those. So I'm going to lead with that. Although I'm a little scared of the Arcanine lead on his part. I think Kartana Feeny covers a lot of options. The only thing that doesn't do well against is like Gyarados and Snorlax. So I think that's safe. And thing, I'm gonna bring Mudsdale and P2 in the back. I don't really need Coco here. It would be nice against his Gyarados, obviously. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna lock in with these. Arcanine, I don't think I've brought Arcanine once yet, which is really unusual, because I normally bring it a lot. I just, it hasn't had the greatest matchups in the last couple that we've faced. Because it, it just gets wrecked here by Chomp, Gyarados, and Nihilego. Yeah, I don't like not bringing Arcanine, because I really like the Intimidate support and the Snarl, but we'll see how this goes. Alright, so he does lead with the Toga tomorrow, Gyarados, kind of like I was expecting. I could have led... I guess I could have brought Coco and just Discharged here, but... It's normally fake out Toga tomorrow, and then Gyarados can just, like, Z water move Coco and one-shot it, so... I didn't really want to deal with that. This puts us in a reasonably good position. Keeping in mind, I have those two in the back, okay. So I'm expecting a fake out here. I don't know onto which Pokemon though. So I think I just want to Leaf Blade Gyarados. It's not going to KO it, but it'll do a lot. And then also... I can either Protect Kartana, I mean Protect with Feeny, or I think I'm just going to also move Bass Gyarados, honestly. I want the damage on that thing. Because Togunomaru itself isn't... Okay, he's switching that out. That's interesting. I wonder if he went for... Well, he can't paralyze me with Nuzzle. That's a good switch into Arcanine, because it's not going to take anything from Moonblast. Or Leaf Blade. That was actually a really good switch. Okay, Fake Out. That's fine. And that's not going to do much. Okay. It's still not a bad turn one for us, it was just good, re good repositioning on his part, because now I kind of have to get Kartana out of here. It's a really obvious play, and I could just stay in and Sacred Sword Toga tomorrow, um, expecting him to snarl with Arcanine. But I don't think it's worth the risk, honestly. I think I want to go ahead and get in Mudsdale, because that 
threatens an Oko on either of these two. And... Let's see, did he have his own Coco to change the terrain? He did not, so Swagger into Mudsdale is safe. I could also just Scald Arcanine for some damage on it. I think I'm going to do that. It could protect, and he could Zing Zap Feeny. But I think I'm prepared. I'm, I'm okay with that trade-off, even if that happens, because I still get Mudsdale in. And he can't burn it with the mist up. Okay, he does Zing Zap the Feeny. As long as we don't flinch here. Holy crap, that does a lot. Alright, I was not prepared for that. I should have protected. <laughs> I really did not expect that to do that much. I know it's stab super effective and all, but... And he does get the flinch. Oh, that's really unfortunate. Alright. Well, there's a good chance Gyarados comes back in here. The question is, which one does it come back in for? Because I need to pick the right target. I'm kind of expecting him to switch one into Gyarados and protect the other. Um, let's see, which one is the bigger problem right now? Arcanine is definitely a problem. So I really want to go for the high horsepower, but I feel like it's going to switch into Gyarados. Because that's just so obvious. Um, so I think I'm going to high horsepower Toga Tomorrow. And just protect with Feeny. Does switch into Gyarados. Yep. So I called that right. Ooh, spiky shield. I didn't think about that. So not much is going to happen this turn. Apart from me hurting myself a little bit. So now... I don't know if Mudsdale can take a waterfall. And I don't really want to find out. So I think I'm going to switch into Porygon. And then switch in Kartana for the Tapu Fini, expecting to take a Zing Zap. And that'll put me in a much better position next turn. And I can't get paralyzed still because of the mist on the field. No dice on special attack, that's okay. This should do nothing. Still does quite a bit. And he D-dances. So that's a little scary, but a Thunderball will take him out. And I don't think even at plus one he can kill Porygon. Oh, actually, I can't Thunderbolt, because Toga Tomorrow is still around. Ooh. In that case, do I want a Trick Room? Um... Huh. I think in case it's Focus Sash, I'm just going to double Toga Tomorrow and hope that he does not protect it. Because I need to take that out in order to be able to Thunderbolt the Gyarados. So if he's smart... Okay. Wow, he just drew it. I did not see that coming. That's also a good play. This guy's switching really well. And that is probably into Porygon. Which is bad. I don't know if I can take that now that he's plus one. Okay, I can. But I'm not going to take the follow-up waterfall next turn. And we proc with Citrus Berry. Okay, so it's definitely support Arcanine. So 
this is a tough spot here. I think I might just have to let Porygon go down. Although, I somewhat need it to deal with Gyarados. I'm going to go for the Hail Mary Trick Room. I'm not really expecting to get it off. And then I'll switch into Mudsdale here. Expecting to take a fire move. Alright, yep, we don't get the trick room up. And I do at least call the flamethrower. Wow, that does more than I wanted to. Yeah, I think the Gyarados is going to get us here. Because I have to bring in Feeny. And I'm kind of expecting Arcanine to protect or switch. So I'm going to go after this Gyarados and probably protect Mudsdale since he's presumably going to waterfall that slot. But I don't even think Moonblast is a two-hit KO, so we may be out of luck here. Okay, the Arcanine does switch into Togo tomorrow, but I couldn't high horsepower that slot because he's going to presumably waterfall my Mudsdale. Yep, okay. Let's see how much this Moonblast does. If it crits, it might knock it out. That'd be amazing, but I'm not expecting that. Yeah, it's not even a two-shot. <laughs> so that's pretty bad. I think he's got us pretty well cornered here because he can just waterfall Mudsdale and zing zap Feeny, and there's not a whole lot I can do about it. One thing I can try is protect Feeny, switch into Kartana, who can take, I'm hoping, two waterfalls. Because that's what it needs to be able to do. And he's still got all four, so I'm. I'm not too optimistic of a comeback here, but I'm going to try. Ooh, he dances again. That was a good play. Yeah, there's really no reason for him not to. And Encores into the Mudsdale spot. That makes sense to lock me. Well... Yeah, to lock me in to protect. So now he's going to Encore Tapu Fini, like for sure. And expecting that, I think I want to switch into Mudsdale and Leaf Blade this Gyarados and hope it can take it out. If he does Encore Fini and Kartana doesn't go down to the plus two waterfall, we still have a chance. Ooh, he switches. That's not good. Now Leaf Blade shouldn't KO Gyarados. That's what he went for there. Man, maybe I should just double Gyarados there instead of switching. I was just really worried about an Encore. Oh, he waterfalled that slot. That's even worse. I should have just stayed in. Yeah, especially because I can't protect with Kartana. I think he's got it now. So I will Scald and Leaf Blade. But I don't think it's going to matter.
This Gyarados might even switch out, honestly. Even though it's plus two, plus two. Oh, he... Okay. Interesting. Alright, that does make sense to get another Intimidate. I kind of thought about the Gyarados Protect and wanted to Sacred Tour the Token of Mario slot. And I think now I'm going to Moonblast Gyarados and Sacred Sword Toga tomorrow. It can fake out though. Ah, oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, it's, it's he's just going to fake out Cartana. Well, okay. Ice Fang. I can take that, can't I? Yeah. Alright, so that gets me back to neutral attack, I think. I think I've only been intimidated once. So amazingly, this is still not over. <laughs> but if he makes safe plays, which he has been mostly so far, he should be able to win this. Yep, there's the Arcanine. The problem is, I think... Cartana is now in range of Ice Fang from Gyarados. So... I'm gonna Moonblast Gyarados. And then also Sacred Sword Arcanine. I would love to protect Cartana here, but I can't. This is presumably like... Protect Gyarados, Flamethrower, Cartana, that's a safe play. So maybe I should have scalded Arcanine, actually. Yeah, I should have scalded Arcanine. Let's see what he goes for. I made that play too quickly. Yep, I should have scalded Arcanine. I might have actually had a chance there. Because if I doubled into Arcanine, I would have killed it. Because now his Arcanine is free to just sit in here and snarl Feeny. That was my one chance to get back into the game. Yeah, I might have been able to win depending on what his last was if I'd done that. Especially if it was Garchomp. It's not Lego, it's over anyway. Okay. Well. I think I'm gonna Scald Arcanine here, because Gyarados, even at plus two, I don't think can do that much. Let's see how much a waterfall does. It can flinch, of course. No, no, that still does enough. Okay, yeah, that's over. So I should have Moonblasted Gyarados this turn. <laughs> well, we'll see how much I get from Leftovers and how much I get from another Leftovers. Gonna protect next turn. And then maybe I can take one more Waterfall, but assuming he has something offensive. Okay, it's Snorlot. Yeah, so I don't think I can kill that anyway. So I'm going to play for the win. I'm going to protect here to get my lefties back, although Snorlax is probably going to set up. I'm guessing it's like Curse. Could even be Belly Drum, which would be really bad. Gyarados protects like I thought. I guess I could have gone after Snorlax here. It is Belly Drum. That's terrifying. So that should lock this game up. Next turn, I can maybe take a Waterfall and KO Gyarados, but Snorlax will kill me with anything he has. Let's see if I can take the Waterfall, though.
Nope. Alright, well that was a good game. That was like a 20 minute one. And we take our first loss of the series, but that's okay. That was a good learning experience. Alright, well I think I'm going to call this one here. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. And as always, feel free to like and subscribe if you want to see more. And I will see you next time.